Howdy guys, well, this is the question that I've seen all over the place, and that is the vacuum system on a second gen Dodge Ram. Now, what is this? Where does it go to? Where does it plug in? What does it do? What does it power? Why do I need it? Can I get rid of it? Is it like totally necessary? Does it get me more power if I block this line off, or is it a different line I'm going to block off? The questions are endless, so let's get straight to it. The first thing we have is the vacuum pump. That is located down below there. You can see sort of down here where the vacuum pump's located. We've got this a little adapter going from the half inch to the little itty bitty uh, vacuum line. And that goes up to the manifold and feeds the manifold up here. And this is just basically a line that runs across the entire length of the firewall that just feeds all the various things. Now, if your truck is a vacuum operated uh, braking system or brake boost, uh, you know, vacuum boost brakes, then you will have a big half inch line going from the vacuum pump up to the brake booster up top here. And then you'll just have this little line teeing into it about midway. So back to this guy where we've got the vacuum line being fed from right here. And then over here we have the line going to the cruise control that can you can kind of see that snake down into here which then goes down below the battery and feeds the cruise control in there that's really a fun one to get at if you ever try to do that and then here we have a line here this guy goes into the uh to the power of the transfer case switch which then goes to the cad actuator you can see it's just a uh, flimsy black line but that gets adapted down to a white uh, line somewhere around here. It's back here somewhere. It gets adapted to a white line that uh, feeds all that. And so that's where that goes. And then we have the line that feeds all the in-cab controls. This guy likes to fall out of this connector here and actually come close to the turbo and completely melt off. And then that's one really common thing. People asking, where does this go? What does this do? Why don't I have vent controls? Um, typically, if your vacuum system has failed and on your lost vacuum, or maybe this line just melted off, then you'll only have defrost on your vent controls. So a telltale sign you have a vacuum problem. And that's where this line goes in there right there. It goes in there and then feeds all the switches in the cab, which then goes to all the little actuators to control your vacuum and vents. Back to our rusty and not so trusty Gandalf. This is a perfect example of why people are asking where does this line go and what does it do because once you add gauges and all that other fallery you can tell that truck's oily you can't see a thing uh so you're gonna have to trust me the vac the white vacuum line going to the transfer case is down there you can see right there a vacuum line and then i got the boost sensor in the way there but you can kind of see it goes to a t on the manifold just like you saw on the other one the other one had a little adapter in there going down the ways i don't know if that's a th new thing or if the previous owner decided that was necessary but if we go underneath in the mud, we can see a bunch of other garbage that I need to address. But the vacuum lines come down in this shielded, you can't see a thing. I'll have to get a flashlight. Uh, okay, well, that'll have to do. So we've got these uh, split loom in here. They've got two vacuum lines in them. It's got a white vacuum line, which you can maybe see there. You got a white one and a green one the white one gets vacuum all the time he connects up to the manifold up top there and feeds the vacuum switch located on top of the transfer case the green one is a vent he literally just dangles right at the top there by the right where the white one hooks up he dangles there very closely in that proximity and that's really all he does he just he vents off the transfer case and the 4x4 four four, uh, cat actuator. So that those guys just go down there and feed down the vacuum switch. You've got the white one and uh, the green one there. And then they got two other ones, a black one and a red one. They connect up over here too. They go to the, from the vacuum switch. They go along the top here and then they feed down by the skid plate here. They got the black one and the red one. They go down, run along the skid plate Oh, well, can we see? Not really. They turn into steel lines, which can we see? Nope. Steel lines going along the frame and then, again with the not being able to see, along the frame and then they turn into rubber where they go down to the axle. 
kind of see there. Hopefully you can see better than I can. So we got the two rubber ones going down to the axle. All is good. You got the red one going towards the passenger side and the black one going towards the driver's side. Now, uh, what these do is you, uh, by shifting the transfer case, there's a vacuum switch on top of the transfer case, obviously, and these change the vacuum. So in uh, four by four mode, this one will get vacuum. Uh, the red one will get vacuum. I'm sorry. In two wheel drive mode, the red one gets vacuum. In four by four mode, the black one gets vacuum. And that uh, changes the cat, the, uh, the, the locks and unlocks the axle, so you get 4x4. Four four. So to make sure those are hooked up right, because it's quite easy to get them wrong if you're just throwing connectors on uh, various things. Now, one reason it is a good idea to vacuum test with your system, regardless of whether all your little vacuum peripherals work or not, is because the vacuum pump obviously sucks up air. Gum sucks up through the lines and whatnot. Well, if you have a leak, that leak could be sucking up dirt, grime, grunge, and garbage, and that all that stuff gets put into the vacuum pump. But what's worse is what happens to that air after it goes through the vacuum pump. Well, it gets pumped into the crankcase. So all that dirt, grime, and grunge, you guessed it, it ends up in your crankcase, which really isn't what you want. So we're gonna be vacuum testing this thing. Along your vacuum manifold, there should be a place where you can pop a plug off and just throw a vacuum connector in there, or throw a, uh, vacuum line on there to feed a vacuum gauge to see if we can do this like i say you throw gauges and all that stuff on you can't see or do anything anymore but it is worth it right guys like that doesn't have to be perfect as long as it holds there and we're going to run this we got a nice long tube so we can run this into the cab there really is no reason that we have to have this gauge in the cab other than being ex super extremely fancy. You could just put this thing in the engine bay somewhere you could see, or I mean, you could go through the extremely tedious task, overwhelmingly un just undoable task of getting out of the truck in order to look at the gauge. I mean, that's up to you. So we're gonna start this thing up. Obviously we're at zero, zero on the gauge. We wanna see at least 20, and that's uh, inches mercury. I'm pretty dang sure. It's, we want to see at least 20, 30, or 29.4, whatever it is, is considered like the perfect vacuum. Good luck hitting that. But I'd like to see at least, like I say, at least 20, 25 would be my preferred. I don't even know what this thing's gonna do, so we'll have a, we'll have a look. Oh, we get to listen to that. Edit. Now this thing is going to build up a little slower than your uh, newer trucks or your 97 and newer because we do have that big vacuum booster we're having to fill up. So taking a little while to start is not uncommon. So we've got 20 and also I don't even know if this gauge is even accurate. I've never even tested it recently. So we've got our minimum of 20 so that'd be good. I'd like to see 25. You can do it. Yeah, 22. 23, we can lay out the clutch so you can listen to that awful gear rollover noise. Actually, it's not too bad cold. We're at 23 and a half. I think this system will do it. 24. 24 and a half. 25, this is a stinking awesome rig. Yeah, it's perfect. We got good vacuum on this guy. Oh yeah. So you could always just let this guy stabilize. But for the sake of video, we're going to turn this off and do the second part of the test. And that is make sure nothing leaks. We're going to turn off the truck and make sure it doesn't skyrocket down. We're at 26 already. So we're at 26 and, well, let's just say a third. And, well, it doesn't appear to be going down. We'll come back at this guy in 10 minutes, make sure he hasn't gone down a noticeable amount. And we'll call him good. So it's been 10 minutes and it's actually gone up to 27. It's even gone up further than the last time. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, see every time I tap it, it goes up. That's it. So it's almost at 28 now. Just keep tapping that gauge. You can fix any vacuum problem in the world. So I'd say it's, uh, I'd say it's good to go. There you have it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this answered the question that you were looking for. The have answered by clicking the video is what you're trying to accomplish is answering that question. Hopefully that did it for you. Uh, if it did not, let me know in the comments what your question is. I'll try to get it answered. Um, and you put a pretty please on the end. I will 
possibly be able to make it into a video like this one where we answered Mr. Papa Gomez's question and we tackled a couple other things at the same time. So I do like doing that because, you know, that way other people who have the same question obviously can find a video and possibly get that answered question answered. Answered question. Yeah, I get a lot of those too. So thank you for watching. Take care. Keep wrenching and just enjoy what it is you're doing because I sure am.